Newborn baby boy found in abandoned house in Limehouse in Catherine. A newborn boy was yesterday morning found on the veranda of an abandoned house in the community of Lime Hall in Geisel, St. Catherine. The infant, whose umbilical card was still attached, is now at hospital being medically examined. The discovery was made about 7.30 a.m. and the police called. A team took custody of the infant and took the newborn boy to the Lindsay Hospital for medical examination. The matter is being probed by the police. Prosecution fails to have conspiracy to murder charge in Beaches Town trial amended. Judge Chester Stamp refused an application by Prosecutor Lou Cook to have the indictment of the Beaches Town and Oscar Barnes murder trial amended. The prosecutors wanted the indictment to reflect that Everton Beaches Town MacDonald allegedly conspired with Denverlin Publiminto to kill his wife, Tony MacDonald, in 2020. Cook also wanted the indictment to reflect that Minto had conspired with Barnes to carry out the murder. Cook was seeking to have Justice Stamp accept his proposal for amendment, however, Stamp agreed with the defense lawyers representing both accused in the Home Circuit Court murder trial. Justice Stamp refused the application, agreeing with the defense lawyers that amending it could be prejudicial to the accused. Stamp then instructed the jury to officially return a not guilty verdict on the charge of conspiracy to murder. Judge Stamp ruled on Monday that there was no evidence showing that McDonald conspired with Barnes to kill Tony. McDonald and Barnes are still before the court on the murder charge. Residents of Greater Portmore protest full order emanating from a switch plant in the community. Residents of Greater Portmore in St. Catherine staged a protest on February 6 over what they describe as an unbearable order emanating from a switch plant in the community. The placard bearing protesters, which included teachers of the Greater Portmore High School, gathered at the institution's gate, chanting and calling for the National Water Commission NWC to address the issue. They said the issue has been a long-standing one and previous calls for action have fallen on deaf ears. Mayor of Portmore, Leon Thomas, confirmed that the issue has been ongoing for several years. Speaking in an interview to Portis, the mayor, who was en route to the process site, said several schools are being impacted by the full order. The sewage plant in question is managed by the National Water Commission. We have meeting with them. We talk to them about the order. They respond sometime by doing some makeshift things down there to reduce the stench. And sometimes they pay no attention at all. The member of parliament also reach out to the chairman of the NWC. We have discussion with the local management and they are doing absolutely nothing. This plant affects the Greater Portmore High School, the Greater Portmore Primary School, the Greater Portmore Basic School, the Sabina Basic School, and over 1,200 housing units is close to the sewage plant. I must also tell you that I live in that same vicinity where this is taking place, and I am standing in support of the schools, the residents that it affects. Murder is down by 24%. Murder in Jamaica is down 24% year on year as at February 3rd. The latest U.S. crime statistics by the Jamaica Constable Force JCF shows that 26 fewer people were killed when compared to the corresponding period in 2023. According to the JCF, 83 murders were recorded across the country's 19 police divisions. At this time last year, 109 murders were committed. According to the serious crime statistics, which are often updated weekly, 18 murders were committed over the period January 28 to February 3rd. The St. James Police Division, which was the most murderous division for 2022 and 2023, recorded 14 homicides to date. This is followed by St. Anne, St. Catherine North, and St. Catherine South with 8 homicides each. The St. Andrew Central Police Division has 6 and Manchester and Trelawney have recorded 5 murders each. Shooting and injured persons reported have increased. There are 23 fewer reports of rape. The robbery figures are leveled with last year and there are 7 fewer break-ins. CPFSA providing support to St. Mary Minor, allegedly raped by a security guard. The Child Protection and Family Services Agency, CPFSA, says it is actively investigating and offering support to a minor in St. Mary who was allegedly 
raped by a security guard she met online. In a statement released on Monday, the agency stated that internal checks reveal that the incident occurred in November 2021 when the victim was 15 years old and was reported by the CPFSA's National Children's Registry in December 2023. According to the CPFSA, an investigator from the agency reached out to the victim and her mother. They were offered counseling and other psychosocial support and were instructed to file a police report. The child has also been referred to the CPFSA's Child and Family Support Unit for additional psychological and psychosocial support as well as the Ministry of Justice's Victim Services Division for counseling. Charged with rape, previous sexual assault, sexual grooming of a child, and possession of child pornography is 35-year-old Brian Walsh of a Sutter district in St. Mary. Walsh is accused of meeting the teen on Facebook and threatening to release explicit photos unless his demands for sex were met. Portsmouth Police reports indicated that Walsh and the teen connected on Facebook in April 2021 with Walsh allegedly using threats related to expert photos sent by the teen to coerce her into meeting him for his sexual demands. Meanwhile, Chief Executive Officer of the CPFSA, Laurette Adams Thomas, emphasized the crucial importance of online safety for children. She urged both children and their parents to exercise increased vigilance when navigating the digital space. Cases like this show us the importance of online safety for children. The perpetrator met the child online by pretending to be someone else, coerced her into sending nude photos of herself to him, and then used those photos to blackmail her into performing sexual acts, she said. We are strongly discouraging children from forming friendships online with persons that they do not know or have never met in person because they can be raped, abducted, and trafficked, she continued. Bail denied for defendant in December 10 shooting death. Nigel Madras Bailey, the St. James man charged in connection with the December 10, 2023 shooting death of 42-year-old Kemar Henry, has been remanded until March 26, following the St. James Parish Court's rejection of the lawyer's bail application last Wednesday. Bailey, who is of Bickerset address in St. James, is charged with murder in relation to the death of Henry, otherwise called Brocky and Diamonds, who was gone down by a group of men in his native and trophy community on December 10. During Wednesday's court hearing, Bailey's attorney, Maurice McCurdy, applied to presiding parish judge Sasha Marie Ashley for bail on the defendant's behalf citing issues with how the prosecution witness reportedly identified his client. It is almost as if she witness is convicting himself already without even telling the police that indeed, I saw him shooting X, Y, and Z, and she has not said that. I say that to see. The case for the corn is tenuous at most, very, very tenuous. I am confident that when the matter is called for trial, and I will appear at Mr. Bailey, we will test these things, said McCurdy. But in rejecting the bail application, Ashley noted that one mitigating factor against Bailey was that he was reported held in St. Catherine following Henry's murder. This is a matter that occurred in the afternoon, so lighting is not an issue, and the court is relying on circumstantial evidence to establish that you are responsible for the death of Mr. Henry. They are seeing that the evidence come from a credible source because it's someone who knows you, Ashley explained directly to Bailey. The court is also seeing that though you have resided in St. James, you were found more than a month later in a St. Catherine address, and this raises the real possibility that you are a flight risk. I have listened very carefully to your attorney, but at this time, this court deems you unsuitable for bail. You are remanded in custody, Ashley added. Subsequently, McCurdy voiced his intention to appeal the refusal of bail for Bailey and ask the judgment to be granted to him in writing to the end. The matter was then set for March 26 to allow time for the prosecution's case file to be completed. According to the allegations on December 10, Henry was among a group of people in Antrovia community when they were approached by men traveling in a Toyota Axio motor car. Bailey and his accomplices reportedly exited the vehicle and opened gunfire, hitting Henry in the head, before making their escape. The police were summoned and Henry was transported to hospital where he was pronounced dead. Bailey was apprehended by the police during an operation in Kitson Town, St. Catherine on January 4 and was subsequently charged with Henry's murder. He was also charged in relation to the October 24 murder of 41-year-old chef Oren Morris of a tank road address in Cambridge, St. James. However, that matter was not before the court on Wednesday. Allegations relating to Morris's killing are that he was standing at a business establishment in Cambridge when a white Toyota Filo motor car approached. Bailey and another man armed with guns alighted and opened fire at Morris, 
hitting him all over his body. The men escaped in the waiting motor car and Mars was assisted to hospital where he was pronounced dead. Parents urged to monitor children's online news. Parents are being encouraged to monitor their children's online access to ensure their safety while they surf the internet. According to a release on Monday, Commanding Officer for the Parish of St. Elizabeth, Deputy Superintendent College Minto, urged parents to implement parental controls and supervise and educate their children about the dangers of improper internet usage. Minto was speaking at the launch of the free Wi-Fi by the Universal Service Fund USF in Santa Cruz, St. Elizabeth recently. Explain the potential online dangers such as cyberbullying, inappropriate content and online predators. Ensure they also understand the importance of responsible online behavior, said parental controls if you have to do so, so that you can monitor their device, he said. Establish open and honest lines of communication with your child. Encourage them to come to you with concerns and questions. Discuss with them the risk associated with sharing information such as their age, addresses, or even their personal information or meeting persons that they do not know, he added. In the meantime, DSP College Mental said the provision of a free Wi-Fi service represents a crucial step in the effort to bridge the digital divide in the country. This marks a significant step towards bridging the digital divide and ensuring that every member of our community has access to the vast world of information, education, and opportunities that the internet has to offer, he noted, highlighting that the introduction of internet access is not just a technological leap, it is a promise of empowerment, inclusion, and bonus opportunities for everyone. Let us reflect on the incredible benefits that this initiative brings to our doorsteps. Man shot during attempted robbery in St. Catherine remanded. A man who was shot during an attempted robbery of a delivery truck and was subsequently disarmed was remanded. The case against 33-year-old Michael Smart, who is answering charges of wounding with intent, assault with intent to rob, possession of a prohibited weapon and unauthorized possession of ammunition, was heard in the St. Catherine Parish Court yesterday and subsequently transferred to the gun court for mention on February 26. Smart was remanded by the parish court judge, Janine Nelson Gale. The allegations are that about 11 a.m. on January 12, Smart, who was armed with a gun along with two accomplices, attempted to rob a delivery truck. A struggle ensued during which the gun went off, injuring Smart and one of the truck's sidemen. The men managed to disarm Smart. It was later handed over to the police and a formal report was made. An investigation was launched and Smart was arrested and subsequently charged. He is represented by attorney at law, James Williams. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.